Hey everyone, welcome back. So in the previous video, we talked about monitoring in general, like, you know, what to monitor and why do we need monitoring? And in this video, we're going to talk about how exactly do we, how exactly are we going to monitor? To make things simple, let's say we are only going to monitor the system, system CPU and memory usage. So how can we do that? Well, we could write a simple script that looks at the, you know, free dash h command or uh, the uptime command and looks at the numbers that's available there like the load average and the free memory and uh, this script should keep running every few seconds and uh, look at these numbers and if these numbers are above a particular value it should alert us it could send us an email or it could send a slack message or anything so that's one way to do it right yes it is one way to do it but that's not the best solution out there because this is a problem that was solved long ago by a lot of people who are much smarter than us. And it would be best to just use the solutions that they have instead of reinventing the wheel. So how are we going to do this? We're going to use a tool called Sensu. Sensu is an open source tool that lets us monitor our virtual machines or containers. But remember, we haven't talked about containers at all. So in this video and uh, until we learn about containers, we're only talking about monitoring virtual machines. So this is what we are going to do today. We are going to install and set up Sensu on our local system using VirtualBox. I will link this in the description. But first of all, let's take a look at the architecture of Sensu itself. Sensu has three main components. The first and the most important one is the Sensu backend. So this is where all the magic happens. The Sensu backend is the most important one. That's where the main Sensu components actually run. So there's an HTTP API, there's a WebSocket API, and there's a web UI and uh, there's an embedded HCD store. Now, if you are completely new to all of this, it may sound confusing to you, but just remember that Sensu Backend is a single package with these many services running on them. And we will talk about what exactly each of these do. So there is a Sensu Backend server and then there are Sensu agent. So let's say we have a WordPress server running, you know, with Nginx, PHP and MySQL, all of them and we want to monitor this server. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna install Sensu agent on that server and we will configure Sensu agent to talk back to this Sensu backend server. So what's going to happen is, this Sensu agent will run in the background, collect all the uh, you know, metrics and all the checks that we ask it to do and then send back this information to the Sensu backend. And this Sensu backend will look at it and uh, trigger alerts or errors based on what, whatever we have configured. But don't worry about it, we will get to each of this in a moment. But for now, just understand that there are three parts, Sensu Backend, Sensu Agent and Workstation. So again, Sensu Agent runs on whatever server that we want to monitor. And Sensu Backend is the main server that will be processing all of this information. And the Workstation is the computer that we will be using to work with everything. In my case, it would be my laptop. So it would have Sensu CTL to connect to the uh, backend API of Sensu. And uh, we can also connect to the UI using the browser. This embedded HCD store simply means this is a database that stores all of this information about all the agents and uh, all the checks and uh, metrics, alerts, etc. Don't worry about it for now. All right. So from their documentation, I have copied whatever is relevant to us and uh, made another doc which I will link in the description. Let's go ahead and set up the Sensu backend server. Let's go ahead and launch our virtual machine. Again, using the Vagrant file. It's a simple Vagrant file. Uh, it's, there's nothing to it. It's simply a Debian 10 virtual machine uh, with 512 megabytes of memory. And we have assigning uh, this static IP address. And we are setting the host name as Sensu server. And that's it. All right, so our VM is up and running. So either we can do Vagrant SSH or since we have already added the key, we can SSH directly using the SSH command. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm just going to log into the server using the SSH Vagrant at the IP address. Okay, this is because I have created a server with the same IP address in the past. So, you know, there is a mismatch of the host key. I just need to remove it. All right, so we are in this Sensu backend server. First thing that we need to do is we need to set up the repository. So we need to run this command. Make sure that whenever you run a command like this, you know for sure what's the content of this. You have to be extremely careful when you run this because 
you really don't know what's happening inside that script for all you know it could be riddled with malware so extremely be extremely careful when you install anything like this so what i usually do is download the script first and take a look at what exactly it does and you can see there is nothing funny going on it's just simply installing the repository and uh, setting up everything so that we can install this in supacant packages so now we can simply run it so what it does is simply adding the package repository so that we can actually install sensu there we go so now let's go ahead and install the package sudo apt-get install sensu go backend all right so we have installed the sensu go backend now we need to configure it we can download a sample configuration file from sensu documentation itself so we'll do this so what this command does is it's going to download this backend.yaml and then it's going to write into etc sensu backend.yaml let's take a look at what exactly we just wrote it to wrote into etc sensu backend.yaml all right so as you can there is only two things that are uncommented one is the state directory and the log level everything else is commented so don't worry about that for this to work only state directory is really needed so state directory simply means a directory where sensu backend will be storing all this information all right so we can go ahead and start sensu backend using system ctl let's see if it actually started all right so we can see that sensu backend is actually running let's go ahead and enable this too so that you know whenever the server reboots the sensu also comes back online all right so now we need to set up our admin username and password for sensu let's go ahead and do that so um, i'm gonna export this environment variable called sensu backend cluster admin username equal to i'm just gonna give the username as admin and then the password as password obviously make sure to use a strong password if you are using it anywhere outside your local system and then we can initialize sensu backend using sensu backend init I'm using the full path because if you simply use sensu backend it won't work because the user has been is not in your path variable that's it actually sensu backend is up and running now so now we can log into the admin panel using the ip address of the uh, the vm and then the port number 3000 so let's log in with the username admin and password password all right so we are in the sensu dashboard now and as you can see it says zero incident zero entities because we haven't added any servers or any agents to sensu at all so if we go back to the sensu uh, architecture diagram you can see that here our browser is making a connection to the web ui at, at port 3000 which is exactly what we are doing here okay so let's go ahead and take a look at all the services that are listening on this server we can use netstat or the ss command itself i'm just gonna go ahead and use ss dash lt to list all the listening services as you can see there is something on port number 2379 and then 2380 and then there is 3000 and uh, you know yeah i'm just going to use the n so that it actually shows the numeric value instead of whatever you know it thinks it is running there so you can see there is 3000 8080 and 8081 we know that 3000 is for the web ui 22 for ssh and 8080 is for the sensu api and 8081 is the websocket api which will be used by the sensu agents to connect back and send the metrics and checks results etc 2379 and 2380 are the hcd store that we are talking about this one so if you don't know what hcd is it is a database where you can store information as a key value pair all right so everything's running let me open a terminal window on my local machine and uh, make an http request to the api which would be port number 8080 obviously it says not found because there's nothing there so if you do slash health we can see that uh, healthy equals true so i usually like to do curl dash v so that we can see the headers and the http response code uh, uh, as well so here as you can see this is an http 200 okay that means the request succeeded and the health is good for the servers also another useful tool i like to use is jq as you can see this is a json response but this is in a single line and it's not very readable right so we can use the command jq and pipe the output of this curl command into it so that it formats the value in nice human readable format there we go 
if jq is not installed you can simply install it using apt-get install jq or uh, just google how to install it on your operating system all right so we have the sensor backend set up and running now we need to configure our workstation to be able to communicate to sensu using the command sensu ctl so for that uh, you need to follow these instructions and install sensu go cli again i will link this in the description i have already installed it in my system so i'm not going to do that again once we have installed sensu ctl we can configure it so that sensu ctl knows where exactly the sensu backend is and what is the username and password to it so simply run sensu ctl configure dash n then the username password the namespace url i have already run that and uh, once that's done you should be able to do sensu ctl config view and it should show the output like this so when we do sensu ctl configure dash n sensu is going to talk to uh, you know the sensu backend and uh, get the credentials for your account and then it's going to write into this uh, two files this one and this one all right so we have our sensu ctl ready and sensu backend ready so now we are ready to monitor our server let's say in our case we want to monitor a wordpress server so i'm just going to go ahead and start the wordpress server again there is nothing complicated here it's a simple vm with uh, you know we have installed wordpress in one of the previous videos all right so the ip address for the vagrant server sorry the wordpress server is 21 so i'm just going to log into that in my hosts file, I have wordpress.devops.esc.sh pointing to this IP address for the WordPress server. So, I can open it like this. Alright, so we are ready to install this Ensu agent. So again, make sure to inspect the script before you run it and uh, then run it. I have already done that, so I'm just going to go ahead and run that. Alright, so now we can install the Sensu agent using sudo apt get install sensu go agent. So we have installed the Sensu agent, but still it doesn't know where the Sensu backend server is, right? So we need to configure that. We need to tell the Sensu agent this is the address for the Sensu, uh, Sensu backend. So again, we need a configuration for this, uh, the agent. It should be at etc sensu agent.yaml. So again, we're going to download a sample config file from Sensu itself and uh, write it into etc sensu agent.yaml. So if we take a look at it, there is nothing really, everything is commented. And the only thing that we need is the backend URL. Uh, we need to edit it as root. So I'm just going to uncomment the backend URL and uh, change it to the IP address of our Sensu backend. All right. And now we can start the Sensu agent using service service uh, Sensu agent start. I'm just going to use the system CTL itself. And uh, we can see that it is running. So at this point, the Sensu agent will make a connection to the uh, Sensu backend server and uh, you should be able to see that from here. So if, we, if I do Sensu CTL entity list, I should be able to see that client that we just registered here as you can see the ID is WordPress which is the host name of this server uh, the operating system is Linux and uh, and uh, that's it we haven't configured anything else you can see the same thing in the sensor dashboard also here we can see that there are uh, total entities as one and 100% uh, responsive agents well we only have one server so there's only one agent so now what happens if the WordPress server goes down for some reason? Let's see what happens. I'm just going to do a shutdown from the uh, WordPress server. Let's see how Sensu responds to this. Back in the Sensu dashboard, we can see that there is one incident already reported. Uh, here you can see that there is one server that is failing. And uh, keep in mind, it takes a few seconds for Sensu to mark a server as down, it's not immediate. So if we go ahead and click to uh, click on the switch namespace and uh, click on the default namespace, you can see that there is an event saying that uh, WordPress keep alive. This is because even though we haven't configured any check for this server, uh, the WordPress server, once it has registered to the Sensu backend, it keeps sending a heartbeat 
back to the sensor backend so when the sensor backend does not see a uh, does not see a keep alive anymore it thinks that there is something wrong with the server and it might be down so it alerts us if we have configured any alert for it which we will be doing in the next videos let's go ahead and start the server back okay so our wordpress server is back up again let's go ahead and start the sensor agent uh, process okay the sensor agent is running now make sure that we enable this so that when it reboots it should start automatically so uh, back in the sensor dashboard we can see that the alerts are cleared because the sensor server has received the heartbeat from the one uh, one vm that we had which is the wordpress server now let's go ahead and create a custom event to see how exactly it looks when something bad happens so here this is a post request that we will be making to the sensor agent running in the wordpress server a body of the request would be check means this is a sensu check and the name would be check my sql status and the status as one we will talk about all of this in the next video but for now just let's just remember that status one means it's a warning status zero means all good status two means is an error don't worry about it this is just an example of how an event would look like if we triggered it let me just change it to localhost So let's go ahead and run this from our WordPress server. And it created an event. And in the sensor dashboard, after a few seconds, we can see that the incident has been reported. So if we go back to the um, events, we can see that the check my SQL status is failing. If you're still confused, this is simply a mock event that we have created to see how it looks on the sensor dashboard. Since we have already know that this is not an important check we just created for testing we can just resolve it uh, by clicking this resolve button to recap in this video we have installed sensu backend and sensu agent and the sensu ctl to configure the uh, sensu backend and uh, we have added a single agent to it and uh, we looked at how the uh, heartbeat works and uh, what happens if the server goes down in the next video we will actually Go ahead and configure some of these checks for uh, CPU usage and uh, memory usage etc. So that if the system's memory usage or CPU goes above a certain value, it should alert. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.